On the last video, we make a PLC ladder program for factory I.O. assembler scene. And we encountered problem in Network 2 program, where an error occurred in clamping the product lid. Let's us analyze and modify the program. What function we should add in order to make this process get done. Looking at the system in automatic operation, the product lid passed through the sensor, and didn't stop until it reached, the clamp lid location. After the product passed through the sensor, conveyor lid get stopped, and clamp lid get energized. On this case, we need a function that respond during high to low transition state. Meaning, after the product energized the sensor, conveyor will continue to run, until the product totally pass the sensor. What we need here is a negative edge trigger. Negative edge trigger detects the falling edge signal, and change in address from 1, to 0. So let's use this end trigger function. Under bit logic operation, click end trigger function and drag to network 2 ladder. And address it as M0.0. .0. Let's add a branch for reset function of lid conveyor. Now, compile the program and let's see what will happen. Program is online, let's start the assembler. Perfect, the product passed through the sensor and still conveyor is running. And after the product lid passed the sensor, conveyor stop, and clamp lid is energized. So let us continue the programming, same program we will use for base product conveyor. For network 3, let's add an open contact and address it as, base at place followed by end trigger function, and address it as, M0.1. And for the output, let's add a set function for clamp base, and reset function for base conveyor. When base at place sensor energize, end trigger will give a negative trigger edge to the product until it pass through the sensor. Then, that's the time base conveyor will stop, and clamping base will energize and catch the product base. Let's test again the program. Don't forget to add new instruction or address at factory IO PLC. So let's open up the configuration, and add clamp base for output, Q4.3. And then, base at place for input, I0.2. As you can see, lid at place and base at place sensor were energized, and de-energize when product pass the sensors. And both conveyors stop, and clamps catches the products. Now, to continue the program, the sequence is to move the mechanical arm down, and grab the product lid.
In able to energize the mechanical arm move Z function, let's take a look again the operation in factory I.O. When clamp lid catch the product, lid clamped will energize, and it will give signal to the mechanical arm move Z function. Network 4. Let's place normally open contact, for lid clamped. When lid clamped energized, mechanical arm will go down. So let's add set function for move Z. And then another set function for grab. When the arm get down to grab the product, an item detected function will energize. Item detected will reset three function that we set before, and move the arm forward to the base conveyor. So, for the next network, let's add an open contact for item detect. When item detect energized, clamp lid will reset, and so the clamp base and move Z will go back to its original position. So for the output, we will add three reset function. It will reset clamp lid, clamp base, and move Z. Now, when the arm goes up with the product, the next sequence is to move the arm towards the base conveyor. So let's add an output set function for move X. OK, we're on the base conveyor. By fixing the product lid to product base, we need a certain time to put the lid down to the base. So we will add an output coil and address it as Q5.0. And for our sixth network, let's add an open contact and address it as Q5.0, and then we will use an on-delay timer. When Q5.0 activate, timer will start, and when time is done, it will give an output signal to move Z. Let's address the timer as T0. We will set the time in 3 seconds. And then, let's put a set function for move Z. For timer reset, we will add an open contact and we will address it later. Next network. We will use again a timer to release the grab, move Z and move X. Address the timer as T1 and set the time for 5 seconds. Network 8, timer is needed to set the lid conveyor, base conveyor and position raise. Remember that both conveyors were in idle, when transferring a product from lid conveyor to base conveyor. So, after returning the mechanical arm on its original position, both conveyor should run. And also position raise should go up, to allow the finished product to go through. Timer address is T2, and timer set to 6 seconds.
Okay, we're on the last network. Let's take look the last part of the sequence operation in factory I.O. When timer ends, position rays will go up, and base conveyor will run. After that, product will energize the last sensor called, part leaving. When the product pass through the sensor, position rays will go down. So, let's put an open contact for part leaving sensor, followed by end trigger function. Address the end trigger as M0.2. As we checked before, by using a negative edge trigger function, when product reach the sensor, conveyor will not stop until product pass through the sensor. And then it will reset position raise, so it will go down. Another thing we will reset is the Q5.0 which is the contact for the timer. So we will add reset function for this one. And then to reset the timer we will add an output coil and address it as Q5.1. So, we will put Q5.1 to our three timers reset. T0, T1, and T2 reset. Now it's done, let's review once again our program. Let's compile it and download to PLC simulator in factory I.O. Don't forget to add the tags in factory I.O. PLC that we use recently. Position raise and part leaving. We're online. Let's power up and start the assembler system. The assembler system is now operational. You can add also other system controls, and monitors in the program like stop button, alarms, emergency stop etc. Don't forget to like and subscribe this channel, click the notification bell to notify you, when there's a new video uploaded. Thank you.